Do you know how much your art is worth? After watching this video, you'll be able to set a base price on your art and learn how to increase the value of your art, even if it stays the same quality. Pricing is a challenge for artists of all skills, so when I asked for examples to create this video, we received over a thousand pieces in less than 12 hours. And I say we because I'm joined by a group of full-time artists and buyers who took time to price and critique some of the entries. Arenia is a professional animator. At the time of this video, she's at Titmouse, a studio that creates a lot of cartoons you've heard of. Crunchy is an independent character designer and illustrator who works in digital and traditional art. Marina specializes in game design and animation with a background in both 2D and 3D art. Din is representing the buyer's perspective. He is experienced with the convention side of things and purchases quite a bit of art. Kalanin is not familiar with pricing artwork at all. He's here to give you an outsider's point of view. And me, an animator. During the gallery, you'll see sometimes when our valuations are very different. Otherwise, everything is listed by median price, since our votes were all pretty close. Let's start with a quick review of what goes into a price. Materials. Fees. Other costs. Sales tax when it applies and income tax. Freelancers and businesses pay double income tax. Art quality and experience, and hours of work. All of these need to be factored into your price, otherwise you're spending more money than you're making. Hours of work is obviously very important to a price, but for judging purposes I hid that, so the judges had to assume, based on the piece itself, how many hours it might have taken. At the end of the gallery, I'll discuss how to calculate and add hours of work into your price. And a quick break here to thank this video's sponsor, Amino. Amino is where I'm posting mini versions of all my tutorials using their stories format, which allows for some really interesting possibilities. Stories have to be short, you can fast flip between parts by tapping your screen, and you can add polls and quizzes in between parts. And I'm already thinking of a bunch of crazy stuff I can do with that, like an interactive mini comic series. So instead of posting this exact video on Amino, I made a game where you can test your art pricing skills. If you use Amino, you can follow me, Crown Prince, to support my crazy stuff. If you don't have Amino, there's a special link in the description where you can download the app. So, let me explain how to use this video to price your art. Take the art you want to sell, find the category it fits in, and study the examples for a price estimate. Then, use the tips throughout this video to choose a final price. We judged all of the pieces as if we were a normal customer paying for personal use art. Situations other than this can drastically affect price. For instance, if I wanted to buy your art to put on merchandise I'm selling, or if the buyer is a company, or if you're selling mass digital prints instead of originals. We're not going to get into those things today, we're focusing on commissions for individuals. A little note on the $5 to $10 range, these tend to be beginner pieces. If you find yourself at a similar skill level, then you're probably not ready to sell art just yet, but if you do, make sure to charge at least this much. Raise the price for every character in your piece of art. Raise the price for a background. Complex backgrounds are worth more.
for character sheets, charge a design fee on top of the base price if you do a lot of sketch work and communication with the buyer to come up with a design from scratch. You know, when I was collecting the data, I thought I might have to ignore Cal's prices for the final estimate, but it turns out he was spot on almost every time. Illustrations in traditional art are the most expensive categories. As Din says, it can be trickier to sell these because many casual buyers hesitate to spend over $150 on one piece of art. But people can and will still pay the fair price. Don't undercharge, wait for the right buyer instead. Be prepared to say no to those who try to negotiate you too far down on prices, or offer them a different type of art for their lower price, like a full body with no background. Now that you have an idea of prices, let's talk about the hours of work it takes to make your art. First, if you don't know, find out. Keep track in a document how long it takes to create different commissions, alongside how much you charged for them. You'll get a brutal assessment of how many dollars per hour you're making. Increase your price to reach the dollars per hour you need. If you're scared of sticker shocking current customers, raise the price in increments over time, which is something you should be doing anyway because of inflation. You may have to face the fact that you're spending too many hours per piece. Turtle Hat has this fantastic illustration with a very marketable, unique style, but it took 18 hours to make. Even if you lowballed that at $20 an hour, that's $360, not including operating costs. For that kind of price, we're looking at a different market than what this video is talking about. If you find your hours are too high in pricing you way out of the market like that, you have three options. Charge the high price anyway, develop a style you can create faster, or keep practicing until you're faster. With experience, you'll be able to create an illustration like this in four to eight hours, possibly less if you're super fast. And of course, for advanced artists, some pieces do take 40 hours to make. Charge accordingly. The customer base for expensive art is smaller, but it is there even in the realm of individual buyers. Walk an art gallery at a convention, not the marketplace, but the art gallery, and you'll see what I mean. If you'd like to sell your art for more money, there are a few things that increase the value of the art even if the quality is exactly the same. One of those is reliability. If you always deliver on time and you communicate well, people remember that, word goes around. Having a good looking store, well organized prices, easy to tell, look through, pleasant to look at, that can actually increase the value of your art. And of course, as an artist, you're often told to practice all different kinds of art, but for business, if you get known for a particular unique style or a niche, you can charge higher prices for that. Stuff like tattoo designs or skateboard designs are niche markets that you can get well known within. And that ties a little bit into name recognition, which is basically you just can charge a higher price because you're famous <laughs> or well known in some way. 
So you might be familiar with some famous artists who are able to charge $100 or more just for a flat-colored full body, because if they didn't, they'd be so overflowed with commissions that they wouldn't be able to do anything else. So if demand for your art is high, raise your price. One last tip. People generally don't buy art because it's cheap. When you have a small audience, having a low price doesn't mean you'll get more customers. It means the customers you do have are paying less than what they're willing to pay. A big thank you to today's panelists. You can find their links in the description, along with a list of all of the artists who volunteered pieces for today's gallery. And thank you, Akru, for fixing my first messy price scale. <laughs> Would you enjoy another video like this? Or do you have a question about pricing? Write it in the comments section. Visit my YouTube channel for more tutorials, subscribe for new ones, and join my Patreon to overthrow Nitsua, who is terrorizing the kingdom with his dastardly iron-fisted grip on that top tier. Hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm,